This is the 35 foot pounds. So here we go. This is our foot pounds measurement. So it's right now between 60. So we're going to turn it out a little bit. You can see here. So it's going to increments to 20. So it's kind of be right in this area here. Try aim for the five. Five's right there. Oh, there you go. We'll set it to our 35 foot pound mark right there. Just right above pretty much the four. See how this actually scoots out for it even further. So I think this is the way to lock it in. And we just definitely want it to be in the five area. There you go. So that's a 30 right there. But we'll go with five. There we go. The 30 mark. I think maybe one more twirl here. We we'll get to the five. See where we can go. It's going in 50 now. So I think that was where it's supposed to be. Right around 35, right there. Okay, so that'll be our 35 right there. We're gonna go and put our socket in there, and we're gonna go and get ready to torque this right now. Again, we're gonna use our variator holder tool there, but we're gonna use the other side of it just to hold that down there because we don't have a rear wheel supporting it. So we're just gonna use it somewhere. Smart. And usually you can rest this on your kickstand, or if this was actually attached. So, but we don't have that much leverage here. And we're working on the limit room. We're gonna kind of back out a little bit so I'll show you. I can use a little bit of frame here. There we go. Just wanna hold it down somewhere. Work it. Okay, we're gonna change it. Our socket. We're gonna take it off the impact because we are impacted enough already. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our torque socket here. You can see it fits right in. Try to get habit here. See what that thing is. Put where the uh, is. Okay, righty tidy, lefty loosey. So this is it. We're gonna be pulling it up. When we're pulling it up, we're going to hold this down so that way it doesn't spin this. Okay, there we go. Actually, it's actually pretty torqued already. 35 almost. Might be even a little bit over. I feel it already. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. So it's actually torqued. So it might be even over torqued. But that worked. Okay, so we got that one there. So if this spins freely, it's okay. it's a good sign. Now, for any reason that this went too much further down and this doesn't spin, that's when you know you pretty much have it over torqued. So now we're gonna go ahead and get ready to uh, position this one here. And good thing that the Loctite gives us a little 24 hours to work with before it actually settles in and cements in. Okay, so now we're gonna take this off. I'm gonna show you pretty much how to change the variators, uh, sliders for uh, pulleys. Now we're going to get our kit here. Uh, we're also going to upgrade the, um, okay, they call them the sliding uh, rails. Right here, these teeth right here, we're going to go and upgrade them to some Dr. Pulley ones. And let's see if I have it in here. I know I might have it in this area. Okay. Find all the parts here. Huh? Work. Oh, you know what? I have it right here. Uh, sometimes you try to protect things and put the smaller items in the components, and you end up forgetting it. There we go. We're gonna actually change this as well to some Dr. Pulley ones. And again, see, it says right here. It says the part number. It's made for that size 1814 as well. Just the same as our rollers. Okay. So we're gonna go and take these out. The rollers are universal, go any direction, and you can actually mix rollers, but you cannot, preferably I don't think you can mix sliders. I tried it. It didn't really do much damage to the engine, but I think in the long run, I didn't want to be the first one uh, taking that uh, experiment. So we're going to go and dump all our rollers out. There is a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, yep. So there's six rollers here. These are by NCY. These were 10 grams. Uh, but they were too light. I tried them myself and um, they pretty much uh, gave me slow acceleration. 
Um, pretty much, but uh, the top speed were the same, but very slow acceleration. When I'm at the stoplight, trying to go, it was it was a long time. The heavy ones forced the clutch to engage quicker, so it pretty much uh, allow it to pretty much uh, pretty much swing its arm faster, where it allows it to. Uh, uh, pretty much lift itself where the belt rides more closer to the shaft and which allows this the driven part to pull faster and the wheel starts uh, turning in so that's how it gauges so we're going to go and keep these aside and then we're going to go ahead and replace it with these ones these ones are going to be pretty awesome this is the fun part is putting all new parts that you know are going to improve your performance and then you can actually get a chance to test them out and uh, see how they really work in the real world because one thing that you know uh, and see what people are talking about is another thing to actually experience it that's why i want you guys to have the joy of experiencing these two after you watch my video i hope that you do uh take a look at some of these products for your own um these have we pretty much it comes with a it's teflon coated so it's made very nicely the ncy brand again we're get, still going to use the back side of its uh, variator that one's still the same, and we're gonna still, it doesn't come with the boss, so this is pretty much the boss, where it kind of loops in and out. This is where the, both the variator plates rides on. See there? And it rides like that, opens and closes, and this is called the boss. I pretty much consider it a big wrist pin. Anything with, uh, with your wrist on there, you know, to support your wrist. Uh, that's why they call things a wrist pin. But this is actually called boss. And you can see this one, it's fairly new. It's not worn out at all much even though it's previously been used. Okay, so we're gonna use the same back side um, as our, I'm sorry, actually you don't use any back side. This, we're just using the boss of it, because this is the back side. What am I saying? Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and put this on now. And the Dr. Pulley, how you put these on, is you wanna make sure that it's facing a certain direction that the Dr. Pulley is showing, that's how you can actually say that you're actually putting in the right direction you can see where the long slanted edge is right here not the short one there's a short one there's another short one but the longest one this goes to the back of the wall like so here and how it works is once it spins the velocity of it and uses gravity it starts sliding like that I'm sorry it starts pushing pushing like that see how it pushes in and out it'll come out like that retracting it there you go and then all of them will do it all synchronously Okay, so you want to put the long piece in it. And how you can tell you put it the right way also is the Dr. Pulley should show. See what it says there, Dr. Pulley? That way it should show in all of them. Okay, we'll come to that one as well. There you go. There you go, showing. So again, the long way is facing toward the, the boss. It's pretty much in the flat side where the boss is, is at. Cool. There you go. Total is the same amount, six. And these are replacing the rollers. What the rollers did before was kind of just kind of roll any direction you want. And then when they wear out, they create what they call the flat spots. And those flat spots you know, uh, pretty much lag on your performance. So there we go. We got them all in there now. You can see here that the Dr. Pulley is showing in all of them so it's going to turn it around all for you there you go i think we got it all covered now okay so and the next thing we do is we're going to exchange this you're also going to use the original uh well we're not going to use the original everything is pretty much new including this right here this is the upper scale one Let's see what I show you. this is the old one here See the difference. It's the old one and also with old rollers here. And I just want to show you the flat spots again that it builds. See? That's very flat. And that's for a roller, that means it's getting worn out. You definitely want to replace them. This one's even worse. You can see this one right away. See that right there? The flat spot. So these are pretty worn out. These were 24 grams each, by the way. The 24 gram weight. And that's what causes your, um, it uses that variator velocity weight to distribute how it's going to determine it when it's opening and closing. So we're going to put that there aside. Okay, we're going to open our, our Dr. Pulley. These are like, I think they're gliding. 
call it some kind of gliding rails. Let's see what it says here. Okay, so it just says Dr. Pulley Variator sliders made for it, but it's not called that. Variator guides, I guess. Okay, we're gonna put the variator guides into a star bracket. There's the original star bracket that came with it. Not much difference other than this one's brand new and see why, and this one's the original one. Lay them together. A few variations, but not much. Okay, here we go. We're gonna put these in there. See that it goes on. Oh, and actually, this one actually stays in there. The other ones were loose. The original NCY one that came with it. I'll show you. I'll do the last one here with it. Try to get NCY there. See it says that. See it just wasn't staying. That's one thing, you know. It's good to be able to interchange parts like that because you can actually get parts that you really uh, feel good about. I'm just gonna see if there's any indication of any text at all, since these are all universal. See, it stays much better. It doesn't click off. Very good part. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and put it on here. Beautiful, there it goes. It's, it holds it in like that. And again, the boss rides when we're within. See there, right there. And we can put some molly, but careful again, it's gonna get on the boss. Uh, this side will get on the boss a little bit, but you don't wanna put too much, just put enough here. And do not put it inside your, uh, the rollers here do not need any kind of grease. Because the Teflon coating, it's not supposed to get any grease on there. So I wouldn't recommend putting any kind of um, Molly Graphite or any kind of grease on here. You can put a little bit here, just slightly a little bit, okay? Just to make sure the, you know, it helps protect it from the friction of, of it going back and uh, rotating at high velocity. So we're going to open our Molly Grease here. Molly Graphite. Just use the cap part. Take your finger, make sure there's no dirt, you know, you know, smear more dirt into your brand new components. In fact, if you want to, to be better, uh, you could also put a little bit of grease right here where it rides on. Just a little bit. And by the way, we're going to also uh, put back on our starter gear as well. When we tighten this down, it's also going to tighten our starter uh, kickstart gear as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put that in there. This is where our kickstart gear is going, so we're gonna put a little bit outside. In fact, we don't want the grease to actually get into our kickstart gear. Okay, let's go ahead and see where the kickstart gear is. And we need to eventually get that one back in there now before we put the variator itself. I think it's right here on all this set right here. Oh, I see. There we go, this is the kickstart gear. Remember again, the bevel edge, again, it goes inward. Unfortunately, it does, but however, when it does that, it's harder for us to pull it out because every claw that kind of grips on it slips off of it other than that one um, separator bearing tool that I showed you earlier that we used to, or, or to get that in there. So normally you could heat this up and it will expand it or leave it out in the California sun. They'll probably do that too at 110 degrees or more. It will expand it and you can actually slip it back onto here. But again, our crankshaft is already secured already from all the other uh, components here, including the castle nut from the starter clutch as well, tightening it further down. So, but for right now, we want to make sure that we actually go ahead and put that clutch in. We don't want to put any grease here, so we want to just put a little bit on outside of it. See where it inclines? That's where our starter kickstart gear I shouldn't say starter gear kickstart gear because it's only the only purpose of this gear is actually to trigger it to start from your kickstart uh, uh, stand or kickstart mechanism so if you, your bike doesn't have one you might more likely to have this gear and again you could probably even get your bike to work without the accessories of the kickstart gear but I just like to have it just in case ever I need to manually uh, kickstart my bike if the battery for some reason uh, chokes out or anything like that so we're gonna go and put this one back in. See there, I'm putting it back in. And there's some gap here. So what you can do is once you uh, put the variator in, we're gonna do a little dry fit so you can see it. And when we apply pressure on it, eventually it's gonna tighten this as well. So we don't have to worry about too much. Okay, I'm gonna keep my grease here. My boss. 
In fact, you can put the grease all in here as you want to because the boss will ride as long as, again, we don't want the grease to spill onto the belt that's pretty much exposed in this area right here of the boss. So we can definitely put the grease all inside, it's fine. So we're gonna take some more of our Molly grease. There we go. And we're gonna go keep applying. I should put my finger because my fat index finger is not gonna go in there. So let me go ahead and do that one. You can put it on one side, it actually starts smearing itself once you put it in through here, the shaft, the variator shaft. So we're gonna go and do this way. Okay, there we go. I got get plenty much in here already. And then we're gonna carefully try to get into It's gonna get some on here, but we'll wipe it off. So it's gonna get some right here. Okay, there we go. We're smearing it now. That's what we wanna do. Gonna give it a good smear in there. Okay. We'll wipe it down right afterwards. But right now what we want to do is just to, uh, torque this starter back into its position. So what we're going to use is we're going to take some of the old components. Because if it actually uh, breaks it, we don't have to worry about it. So we're going to tighten it down using some of the old components here. This is the old um, variator back that holds his rollers. I'm going to put it back in there. We're going to also put this right, right here. There's a few missing parts here, but actually they're all there. Okay. Okay. See, it won't let you go all the way in yet because again, there's um, it's the starter uh, kickstart gear is not all the way fully in there. We're gonna use the old one here. Okay. Then we're gonna tighten it down, and we're gonna put some washers in there. And we might even want to put a couple more washers. Normally there's no two washers that goes in here for this setup, but we're going to put it so we can actually pretty much force as much as we can onto it. Let's see if I have another washer. A little smaller one washer here. Okay, that should do a little trick there. Okay, we're going to go and use our torque. I'm not a torque. Keep on saying that impact. I always cross those two together. I don't know why. I think a lot of people do the same because those two that work hand in hand together. Okay, here we go. We're gonna give it. We're gonna try to go ahead and force the kickstart to go back in alignment and flush to the back of where the seal is onto our uh, stroker. There we go. One, two. Okay. See, it says right there, it's impacting it. There we go. The boss itself is forcing it in. All right, let's see how this looks. We're gonna have to loosen it back in order to do that. Set back to reverse. See how it spins freely? That's not what we want. There we go. All right, let's see how it looks. Get all the components out. And let's see if it resets it. We can leave the boss floating there. We can actually see it from here, how far it went. Yep, it went in. We can go in a little bit more. Feels like there still might be a little bit more gap in there. So we'll do it one more shot. Put everything back. it all in there oh, we didn't put the other one in there. it's fine I think the boss is actually the one that actually puts pressure on everything okay so we're good there all right now we can actually put our brand new variator set in there okay we can leave the boss in there because that's where the boss is. The boss is hiding right there. And actually it was good that I actually got this to turn this side of it. So the letters right here, we're gonna need that to reference. I kinda like to have it reference. Everything's gonna, I'm gonna show you how we assemble the Kickstarter assembly as well. And that thing is good that it's referenced like that. So, okay, now we got our rollers in here. 
and we got our Dr. Pulley sliders as well as our Dr. Pulley uh, uh, sliding guide. We're going to go ahead. And these play a very important role. These don't usually come sometime wear out as well. If you can see here on the original one. Not too bad. Not bad as the roller one. Okay, so it's going to go in this way. If there's any lettering, you know me. I want to make sure. See, it says right there. It's the light one. It says GY6 part number. Again, it's going to spin everywhere anyway. But I just kind of like to make sure I, you know, place it in a position where it reads in the same directions as it's supposed to so let me see if I get my finger right here in the middle to the middle make sure it's facing down okay actually we do need to take our boss out because our boss actually goes from this one and once we tighten it furthermore it's gonna put more pressure on this too so there will wipe out the excess of grease that's not supposed to be in this area as you can see here it's nicely lubed all around inside here so I'll put it this way there we go Okay, go ahead and put that in there. See how it goes. We're, I'm holding inside because we don't want the the, the Dr. Pulley uh, sliding rollers to drop. Securing with the other side of my hands, the, my two fingers here. And just kind of push it back. Okay, now it's wiggling a little bit because we have to actually put the boss uh, back in place. So let me go ahead and do that. Grab the boss again. Again, the reason why we don't want to put the grease uh, too much from here is the fact that this, this thing will ride on and then the belt will be exposed to the grease. So we just want to go ahead and put that in there as well. There we go. It's going to move up and down like this. The boss is going to stabilize, it's going to move up and down like that as it causes the friction. So we can actually maybe put a little bit of grease, maybe toward the end here only, since the boss is stabilized and it's not gonna make the grease, but eventually you're gonna start getting some buildup grease here from that. So let's go and take a little bit, just a little bit. There we go, I got a little finger side here. All right, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and put a little grease in there. camera stabilize so just put a little bit just gonna give it a rub a little thin coating okay and it'll perfectly smear it once it gets in there more so you can see here just a little bit on this edge and go and insert it in there. Making sure this is flush, backing it. There we go. Let's insert it now in there. There we go. And just kind of rub a little bit. Uh, kind of lube it. And there we go. That'll help a little bit. Again, we don't want any inside uh, where the variator is. Wipe my fingers out here a little bit. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and clean this area because we don't want any of the threads to catch any grease. It's not supposed to fall loose uh, from it. So, Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put uh, pretty much our belt next because our belt needs to go inside now or else it's going to be hard to get in once uh, we put our variator uh, fan back on. We're going to put the new thin one and uh, versus the, the, the bigger stock ones here. I'm going to back out a little bit so you can see the whole view focus on that area so we're not going to put the new one here we're going to definitely use the washer put this thin one back so this is a, a loner washer here okay okay we're going to go and get the belt ready and go ahead again we want directional the belt to face a certain direction here all right loop what we can we're gonna stretch it what we can. It's good that it's tight because you don't want your belt to be loose. Just kind of pinch it right here, you should be good. And then you can start rolling it in there a little bit. Once you get into the boss, over the boss a little bit. See, there you go. You got it now. It rolls right in. 
So it rolls backward freely because there's no wheel gripping it. And this right here, we're going to put some pressure more on it, and it's also going to move your Kickstarter gear uh, further back as well. So you can see here, it's got a lot of room here. It usually does not rest this far down. Once we get the engine uh, pretty much turned back, once we get these assembled, we can actually twist the belt. You can see it start rising up a little bit more, like right here. This is where it really rests. It doesn't really go all the way down to the boss at all. But that's good though, because the boss will probably eventually catch some uh, the molly grease here that we put earlier. And again, we don't want this. This is supposed to be a dry, uh, dry belt system. It's not a wet belt a clutch system. So it's a dry belt. So go. It's not like a motorcycle where the clutch is a wet, uh, wet clutch. Okay, then we're gonna get our fan. Again, there's no indicating marks anyway. Anyway, I just twist it over, so I don't even know where it is at. But I kind of like to line it like really cool like this that way this is you know horizontal let's see it good checking with you there you go see now it has a lot of pressure here so that's it that's the fan in addition to this fan we're gonna use so we're gonna go and put our washer again there's gonna be a rough side and then there's gonna be a smooth kind of almost bevel looking side I'm not sure you can see the resolution there you go see it's more smooth more smooth and more rough even though it's interchangeable you can use either side I prefer to keep the smooth side facing the uh, lug nut so we're gonna put some our blue Loctite on the thread there's some here already if you do have some here already just go ahead and just kind of use what's on here just go and put your thread on there just kind of like use it up if you can there we go, we got some, but not a lot. So we're gonna apply some more onto, onto here itself. Just sometimes it squirts out quite a bit, so you just want, oh, see, there we go, I didn't really do that much. You can see how it's drawing itself, so I'm just gonna rotate, I'm not squeezing anymore though. There it goes, that's good, that's more than enough. Okay, we got that. And we're pretty confident once you put the blue Loctite, even though you can torque it if you need to manually again, when you want to interchange something like change the variators and eventually you're going to have to replace them because uh, they will wear out you know they're they're not made for lifetime they're going to wear out the variator uh, sliders or rollers but the dr pulley ones they state that it doesn't wear out much compared to the rollers but i think they're about almost the same okay clockwise righty tidy lefty loosey and that's it we got that here oh did we forget one more thing uh, I believe we might want to go and start putting our gasket on there now because I believe the gasket will still fit through the loop but maybe not through the belt so we want to make sure so let's go ahead and uh, put our gasket first that's one thing I might maybe overlook let's go ahead and take this back out it's a good thing that the thread locker usually gives us 24 hours okay here we go I'm gonna get my gasket here beautiful gasket here again it's gonna be a dry fit so if you notice here I didn't put any kind of a gasket sealer on this because again we're gonna get into it a lot to maintain the belt to also clean it out from time to time you can see there's no belt debris um, that's the way I like it clean okay well, let me go and get this off a little bit put the cap back onto my thing give it some more space to work with it was good that the frame is here, it kind of held it a little bit in place. Okay, tilt it upward. Get the camera angle for you guys to see the whole thing. Okay, yeah. we might have to take off the belt, we'll see. I believe the belt, this goes in the back of it, so uh, we can't get it out without removing the belt first. So let's go remove the belt. This little end right here, it faces pretty much toward the clutch area. Just want to make sure you guys know that and kind of hooks downward. It's for this, you can see by just this diagram here, see how that little hook there? And that's pretty much the same hook for that. So we're gonna go and put the gasket in first before we put the belt. So take off the belt the same way, just kind of rotate it, move it outward a little bit, or you can just kind of pull it like this, it'll eventually come out too. 
It's just a little harder on your fingers. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the belt out of the way. And we're gonna put our nice gasket here. And some people don't even put a CB2 cover. Again, the most purpose of this gasket really is to actually protect it from dust. And let's go ahead and get some dowel pins. Again, we are out of dowel pins, unfortunately. Uh, I haven't got a chance to order some yet, so we're going to see what we can do as far as robbing some of the dowel pins that were uh, left on the old crankcase near the transmission area because they fit only 8mm dowel pin. And I, can't, I, I have plenty of 10mm dowel pins, but I don't have a lot of 8mm ones. So we can try to least savage uh, this one right here. There's one right here. Hopefully we can get off. I doubt it. But we can't get off. Uh, we'll put it for right now before we actually turn the engine. Of course, we'll go and uh, get the dowel pins in there secondary. So, but we definitely gotta get the gasket on before we can put the um, uh, covers on. These dowel pins will help us hold the gasket as well. So that's why it plays a lot of important role in making sure that it's in alignment. So let me go and give it the best shot here. Try to pull this eight millimeter dowel pins off. Carefully get our gasket out of the way or let it rest securely so it doesn't fall backward into this. There we go. Okay. The only thing I think of to get it off is a pair of vice grips or pliers. And they're really soft, so they can easily get damaged. Alright, so come on, dial pin. There's only actually one left, really. Uh, so it's either this dial pin or no dial pin for right now. But again, we're not going to be putting blue Loctite on our CVT cover, so it's good that we can just, you know, unscrew it to, when our dial pins come in, just put it back in. Yeah, this one doesn't look like it's in it. You can use what's called a WD-40 uh, blue torch, and it might work, but if it might not, yeah, it's not going to let me without almost damaging it. Okay, so we're going to have to do it without it. We're going to go and just align our gaskets as as possible so when we get the CV2 cover screwed in there it'll actually uh, fit right into and pull down the gasket for us. We just don't have any guiding pins currently right now but we can go ahead and put our you know our unit back into assembly here. Okay get our belt Careful, we're working with our gasket being loose here. Just back here that we can see a little bit more a view of everything. So I couldn't get the, the the dowel pins would have gone here. You can see it's a much bigger hole than all the rest of the normal ones. And then if it's going there, more than likely there's another one that goes somewhere under the lower section. It's always diagonal. And there's usually about the 